Hi guys, this is the final, well, the, the, the final part nine, I think, and also this, I hope, is going to be the final part of this series where uh, our Muslim apologist Hamza tries and, I don't know, make some arguments which address the atheist and the contentions that an atheist has with the claims made by Muslim apologists. And this is also the final one which makes me want to cry. Because we live in the 21st century and most human beings have some basic education, one would think. He repeats his previous misconceptions and failures to get to the highlight, the scholarly highlight, the pinnacle of his apologetic efforts to really show these pesky atheists how futile their efforts are when pitted against this intellectual giant. And what, I hear you scream, what is this irrefutable, unsurpassed argument? I see you shiver with anticipation. Why, it's Santa, of course. Welcome to my secret village. Any atheist that then starts talking about Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy, they're talking nonsense because you haven't claimed belief in a Tooth Fairy, so you don't need to explain its um, the reasons for it. If they want to bring up the Tooth Fairy and Santa Claus, then it's for them to provide the reasons why they support it. <laughs> this exposes another side effect of the Islam virus, the inability to conceptualize or to apply abstract thinking. Now, the Quran does not mention magical creatures and leaves it up to the imagination of the Muslim no, it specifies talking ants or flying donkey. So things that exist with magical qualities attached to them, like light that forms angels or fire that forms the jinn. And this is the only explanation I have found for this total fail, the inability to comprehend that I can imagine a lot and can describe my imagination without necessarily believing it to be the case. I can describe being abducted by aliens in any degree of detail. Do I believe this? No, of course not. It's my imagination. And so are Santa, Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy, or the flying spaghetti monsters, their analogies, fictitious characters in fairy tales or novels. They're used as hyperbole to illustrate the level of childish yet highly pernicious beliefs propagated in Islam. Like Santa whipping his elves and raping Rudolf. That would be an analogy. It's an evil analogy. But anyway, none of this will stop any atheist in their tracks. They will simply laugh and realize the level of ignorance, arrogance, gullibility, and stupidity on display here. I think he's justifiably petrified as he realizes he does not stand a chance against an atheist with this kind of and this level of argumentation. And no, I can't put the tooth fairy back in my pocket. It does not exist, just like your God does not exist until demonstrated to exist. So, has this Muslim apologist Hamza actually contributed anything in the last nine videos? No. He has neither managed to make Islam look like a viable option as a beneficial worldview and way of life, nor has he managed to denigrate the non-belief of gods and goddesses. Has he helped any theist to address the grievances an atheist has with Islam? No, not the slightest. And it's quite the opposite. Instead, instead of shutting up by speaking up and demonstrating his lack of brain power, this guy has shown how weak and how silly Islam actually is and how unconvincing the arguments brought forward by Islam apologists actually are. In other words, a big F for fail. I'm sorry to have to report this.